Hey friends, and welcome back to yet some more Reddit stories about entitled people, insane people, and all that kind of stuff. So be sure to subscribe for more Reddit content and we're getting right into it. Teacher's poor choice of punishment terrorized my bully better than I ever could have. This happened when I was in 5th grade in the early 80s. My mother had recently divorced my abusive father and I was at a new school. I would be in different ones for several consecutive years. I was overweight and female at a time when that made me fair game for both children and adults to bully me. Somehow at 10 and 11 it was seen as my choice and poor judgment that made me be overweight, not hormones, stress, poverty, etc. Q still having disordered eating and anxiety well into my 40s, but that's another story. I'm not sure when it started exactly, but there was a boy in my class that picked at me incessantly and made comments about my weight, clothes, appearance, etc. He never did anything physical and he never said anything loud enough that an adult would hear him. So it wasn't obvious, but I imagine my teacher was aware. One day I finally snapped and started yelling at him to just leave me alone in the middle of the classroom in front of the teacher. My teacher decided that even though up until this point I had been a quiet model student, and even though this wasn't the first time that I had been picked on, she didn't care to figure out whose fault this was, and sent us into a large storage closet together to work it out. The closet was probably a 6 by 6 space, so not tiny for two 11 year olds, but I was so scared about being punished at all and so freaked out about being in a confined space with someone abusive, that once we were in there I immediately broke down into hysterical crying and started hyperventilating and couldn't stop. He was horrified at my reaction, and I think on some level he may have also understood how unfair it was of the teacher to have chosen that path. That poor kid could not apologize enough in that moment, and was absolutely terrorized by being locked in a closet with a girl who sounded like she was about to stop breathing at any moment, and who would not stop crying no matter what he said. I don't know how long she left us in there together, but that kid was in tears by the time we got out of there, and never spoke to me again. And in general, I was picked on far less afterwards by that entire class of kids. You know, even though the situation, weirdly enough, kind of worked out in the end, I just gotta say that teacher is an absolute psychopath. You have two kids that obviously have some issues going on. Could be the two of them in an argument, or maybe one is a bully and one is a victim. Either way, it seems the teacher didn't know and obviously didn't care. So apparently, the best way to work out the situation is to lock them in a closet together. Who in their right mind would think that's a good idea in the first place? And who gave this person a teaching license? Neighbor keeps walking through my backyard. I created a grid work of dog poop to stop her. I live in a neighborhood where everyone owns separate, no walls attached homes but the yards are technically considered HOA common areas. This technicality is only on paper, and no one uses these yards as such. The yards aren't allowed to be completely fenced in per HOA rules. We have a back fence and two side fences for privacy, but they are not connected, again per homeowners association rules. Meaning if someone wanted to walk through our backyard, they could just walk straight through one opening in the fence and out the other opening. Annoying? Yes. But the benefit of this is that landscaping, maintenance, etc. is covered entirely by HOA dues, and I have a substantially larger lot, the largest lot in the neighborhood by almost a half acre, than most of my neighbors. I am an end of the cul-de-sac home, so this benefits me more than anyone else. I have a neighbor next door to me who is a Karen. She is on the HOA board, and has been the very definition of a Karen for as long as I have known of her existence. Just behind our home is a walking trail. There is public access to the walking trail about 200 yards away from Karen's home. However, Karen has recently decided to walk directly through my backyard to get to this walking trail for her daily walks. We have a decent amount of privacy in our backyard, and aren't really visible from any other homes or from the walking trail, meaning we have gotten comfortable living with this privacy. Now we have Karen stomping through the middle of our yard and basically destroying this amazing aspect of our home. I attempted to talk with her, but seeing as she is a Karen, she simply responded by informing me that this is HOA common area, and that she is 100% allowed to walk there. We are not on friendly terms, and she is 100% doing this to annoy my wife and I. What can we do to stop it? My wife and I pondered what to do to get Karen to stop, but couldn't really come up with anything that didn't violate the bylaws. And then one day we look out and see Karen trying to wipe dog poop off of her shoe in the middle of our yard. 
A light bulb went off. We have a dog, a Great Dane. Do you know what a Great Dane does a lot of? And I mean a lot. Poop. He poops. He poops a lot. And they are big. Very big. They are elephant-sized poop and he drops two to three a day. He is area trained and never leaves our yard despite the openings. But I also go out and pick up the poop every day. Do you know what Karen hates? Karen hates stepping on the poop. Especially elephant-sized poop. About three weeks ago, I started collecting the elephant-sized poop and tossing it at both entrances to our yard in a grid-like pattern. For the first few days, you could see Karen watching where she was stepping as she entered and exited our yard. The problem? She could see the poop. I mean, the poop is so large that you could probably see it from a plane, so I get it. Do you know what makes poop nearly impossible to see? When leaves are scattered on top of it. You can't tell what is a leaf, what is poop, and what is a leaf resting ever so gently on a poop, waiting for an unsuspecting Karen to think it is safe to step there. So what did I do? I scattered leaves at both entrances, right on top of the poop grid I had been creating. It was truly impossible to make it through this landmined area without needing to scrape elephant-sized poop off the bottom, sides, and possibly even the top of your shoes. I created this latticework of poop, and even I wouldn't dare try to walk through it, and I was the one who created it. The designer, one might say. Karen did her walk a few days in a row after this, and Karen was seen scraping poop off of her shoes each of these days. I haven't seen Karen walk through our yard in several days at this point. I don't think the war is over, but we are certainly winning this battle right now. And yes, I am still improving my poop grid. Every day sees two to three additional poop piles introduced into this latticework, and a quick spurt of air with my battery-powered leaf blower stirs up the leaves just enough to hide the new recruits. As a note, our landscapers haven't started cutting yet, still winter, so I'm really hoping I can permanently deter Karen's behavior before they start cutting. I don't think I'm willing to leave it out there for them to step in every week. That is just plain rude, and I'm really not a bad person. Edited to add, going through our yard to get to the walking trail is 400 to 500 yards, the main entrance is less than 200 yards from Karen's house, so it is twice as far to go through our yard. Those HOA rules exist for ease of landscaper access per the bylaws. We physically own all of the land on our deed. It is not owned by the HOA. Karen says I can't walk on a path. I have a small cottage in the woods that is only accessible by a short dirt path. This path is private property. The law regarding the situation is basically if there is a road on private property and leads to your property, it must remain a road and is open for public use. So I hired some guys to do construction on the place, and the guys were piling the waste near the main road where they can load it into a container in one go, instead of at the cottage where they would need to take it out to the container one load at a time. Very time consuming and much more work than is necessary. My Karen neighbor starts getting crazy with them. First, she says, I saw you on camera. Lie, there's no cameras. And this path is my property. You can't dump your garbage here. You shouldn't even be walking here. We tell her, you don't own the property. I looked it up. She's irate at this point, so she then shifts to, I spoke with the owner of the property and they said you can't be here. Lie. I told her, cool, have him call me. She doesn't. She's boiling at this point and threatening to call the police while I'm explaining to her how we'll clear everything in a day or two. It's not a big deal, and just how the law is and that she has no right to tell us that we can't do what we're doing here. So she calls the police. The police arrive, see that the place is in fact a road, and promptly laugh at her and tell her to stop harassing us. They ask me if I'd like to file a complaint against her for being a public nuisance and I kindly decline. The next day, she mows her lawn and dumps all of the waste on the path, blocking our access to the cottage. I call the same officer and they come and see that, yes, purposely blocking the path is illegal and just plain rude. They slap her with a fine and ask again if I'd like to file a complaint. I kindly refuse. Two days later, she cuts all of the trees along our property line, trees which are on my side of the fence felling them into my property and leaving an absolute effing mess. Guess who I call? Yep, officer doesn't want to deal with this crap anymore, comes and arrests the lady for destruction of private property and trespassing. Good riddance. 
And as an extra detail, OP also says this in the comments. I'm in Central Europe, and the trees weren't considered mature, so it's not a felony in this case, just plain vandalism. Calling the police on my creepy neighbor. I'm a young woman living alone in a studio apartment with a courtyard view, so when I look out the window, there's another apartment complex. For a few months now, I've noticed this one male neighbor staring at me very often throughout the day and pulling out his phone to seemingly record or take pictures when I change or when I'm in my PJs. I now try to keep the blinds closed as often as possible, but I don't have AC and I really need to have the windows open as it gets really hot in here. They open inwards so I can't open the windows if the blinds are down. At first, I gave the guy the benefit of the doubt, but even some of my friends have this running joke of asking, can we come over or is that guy going to stare at us again? Today again I caught him staring and I sort of shrugged to let him know I saw him staring. He shrugged as well and pulled out his phone to record or photograph me again until I pulled the blinds back down. After asking my lawyer friend for advice, they told me to report it to the police as it could be considered harassment. I called the non-emergency line and they sent a policeman to get my report and he went to give the guy a warning. The same policeman later called me, saying that this was all a big misunderstanding, as the neighbor films a lot of videos for his social media and allegedly records himself in front of the window and not me. He also denied ever staring. Apparently, he had some friends over and they all vouched for him and laughed it off. On one hand, it's not like he was going to admit to it if he was creeping. On the other hand, maybe he's right and I'm a crazy lady who called the cops on my neighbor for no good reason. Either way, I'm embarrassed and I kind of never want to open my blinds ever again. Edit, thank you all for the advice. I'll be buying mirrored privacy film for my windows tonight. I'll also add that when I mentioned me changing, it's usually me having to wear a button down on top of my usual tank top slash t-shirt for a Zoom call, then taking it off after said meeting. I am by no means parading around my apartment naked with the windows open for fun. And a commenter here said, The neighbors and policemen's response both seem like they're minimizing your discomfort and insisting you're mistaken. Based on your description though, it seems like you have every right to feel uncomfortable. Having someone consistently watch you in your private space is definitely not okay. And I'd also add that from the perspective of the responding officer, I don't really think there's much that he'd even be able to do at least with what he currently has to go off of, given that it's more of just a he said, she said situation and there's not really any proof of what's going on. I'm not saying OP's wrong by any means, she definitely has cause for concern. And if I were to make a guess, I'd personally say the guy probably was lying to the cop and that he probably was recording her. The explanation that he records himself in front of the window for social media kind of sounds like something he might have made up on the spot. But I wouldn't really agree with the commenter saying that the cop is just minimizing OP's discomfort. It just sounds like he can't really do much about it unfortunately since there's nothing to go off of. Alright guys, that's all for today. Thank you for watching, I appreciate it. And as always, if you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe for more Reddit content. So take care, I'll see you in the next one.